screen. This is from the Broward Sheriff. Um, Broward Sheriff's Office working a developing incident regarding a report of active shooter located at 5901 Pine Island Road Park Land. Here is what we know. Oh, can you guys go back and share it again? Here is what we know so far, and then it went blank. So we're all working off the same uh, page. Uh, if we got, guys, if we can get the tweet back up, and, and, and Art, you know, you're sitting in front of a TV watching. I mean, I'm seeing several, several victims being wheeled into these ambulances for treatment. Look at this scene. Well, I'll tell you, it's a, it's a very good sign that they're releasing children out of the school, and and they're taking them to a, a secure location. I assume that location is where parents can respond to, and that's another thing that yes. law enforcement sets up as a particular area where parents can respond and, and pick up their children. And it looks like they're already evacuating it. But as we can see from the screen right here, um, they're actually taking care of injured individuals on the scene. Uh, they've got a triage set up. It looks like multiple injuries here. Uh, this is a horrible sight for uh, these poor kids in, uh, in school and for the parents that are responding to the scene to pick up their children. And let me just make it clear for people who are watching, these are not live pictures uh, because this is an act. That, okay, I'm being told these are live. This is fine. We're just showing all these, uh, the ambulance presence. But we're obviously having to be very careful with live television in an active shooter situation uh, not, to, not to get ahead of this um, and show exactly what SWAT is, uh, is doing. Um, concern, is there a concern art for potential booby traps here as uh, SWAT enters this high school. And there's always that type of concern, and we did see that during the Columbine shooting, and we have seen it in other shootings. Um, uh, you know, they've got to figure out who the individual is right away, you know, uh, and there's several things going on at the same time. Not only are they responding and trying to stop the threat, but they're also looking at this particular individual. And we don't even know if they have him in custody yet or if he's down or if he's been neutralized by law enforcement. But um, this whole investigation will start because they've got to figure out as quickly as possible uh, what what is behind this individual going on this particular rampage. Is it is it just a... a a scenario similar to Columbine, or is it, or, or is it more of a scenario where he was targeting specific individuals based on some, some type of negative relationship he had with them? But um, there seems to be quite a few injuries here. Okay, Art, stay with me. Diane Gallagher is one of our CNN reporters. She's been making calls on exactly what's happening. Diane, what do you know? Uh, so, Brooke, we're still waiting for a sheriff's office representative to get there on scene to kind of assess the situation more. But I can tell you that Coral Springs police just tweeted out telling students and teachers to stay barricaded inside Douglas High School, not to leave the building until police can reach them inside. Uh, like you guys have been talking about, there are a lot of questions right now as to whether or not this is uh, still something ongoing inside uh, that high school there uh, in Parkland, Florida. This is not far from the Miami area as you've been showing them in Broward County, uh, but this is uh, the hospitals. We've called them, Brooke. They haven't said if they're expecting patients right now or not, but they are on alert. They're aware of the situation at this point. Again, we're kind of waiting for the Broward County Sheriff's Office uh, to arrive there on scene with somebody who can give us a little bit more information about what's happening. And I you apologize. I apologize here. I'm trying to check my email on things that are uh, coming through here. But we're seeing a lot of tweets. We're seeing a lot of things from uh, kids and, and worried parents right now uh, watching these images on television at this moment, seeing these officers uh, there on the streets around the school. Uh, it started coming in. We started hearing some scanner traffic not too long ago, actually, uh, within the past 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, uh, and, and have been listening to it kind of escalate from there. But again, officers, Brooke, trying to get a handle on what's happening and get those kids out when they can, but asking them to remain there until they can reach them instead of running places until they know exactly what's going on. Diane, thank you so much. With a little bit more here as we're reporting on this active shooting scenario, this is Parkland, Florida. This is Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. And again, hearing from the Broward County Sheriff's Department as we stay on these pictures, um, we don't know a lot. Again, they're saying deputies are responding to reports of a shooting at this high school. There are reports of victims. And then the public information officer should be there momentarily to help us out. But I mean, you see these children. These are children, uh, young people in high school, some of them 
them able to get out. Others, as you just heard, some of the guidance to just stay barricaded in uh, in place in the high school. We saw some of the uh, the members of the SWAT team enter the building. I've got Art, Art Roderick still on the phone with me here, and and Art. Tell me what they're doing with the students, because you see you see a number of the students streaming out of the school, but then the guidance is to stay put. Art, are you with me? Yeah, I'm sorry, Brooke. Yeah, yeah, that 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 is a good sign to me, where they're where they're uh, evacuating children out of the school, because usually the threat is still active and still major. They'll go ahead and have these kids shelter in place. Uh, and, and, you know, they've, they've practiced this, they've trained for this, they know where all the shelter-in-place locations are, the teachers know where they are. So to see kids being evacuated already is a good sign. Now, I'm assuming the school is a fairly large high school down in Broward, um, mm -hmm. so they could be evacuating just one portion of it and concentrating their SWAT tactics and law enforcement tactics to a particular area of the building. and, and of course, as usual in these particular situations, we're not getting uh, a ton of information out here uh, other than we know there's injuries and, and there's an active uh, law enforcement response, obviously, when you get the SWAT team coming in. And, and you see the SWAT team in a, in a stage of, uh, you know, readiness um, that tells me that uh, there's a very good possibility that the... Um, that the shooter, it, it's still an active shooter situation. Right. Um, stay with me, Art. I've also got James Galliano uh, on the phone. And James, you know, we've seen uh, sort of almost multiple layers of police. They're, they've obviously put up this perimeter as they do in situations like these. We've seen some SWAT members head in. Uh, obviously, there's a lot they don't know, right? If it's one shooter, multiple shooters, walk us through what they're doing. Sure, Brooke, and to and to kind of piggyback on what Art said, he kind of he yeah. kind of nailed it in the chronology. The, the the first thing we want to do is is interdict interdict the threat. We want to make sure we get in, and if there's an active shooter, if there's somebody that is that is in this instance potentially harming children, is immediately moved to that. And I think Art also referenced Columbine, and Columbine, which happened back in, in I think April of 1999, was essentially a wake up call to law enforcement, and it basically taught us. We cannot sit back in these situations and deal with them as we had in the past, which was the slow, steady, methodical law enforcement clear. In these type of situations now, whether it's determined to be terrorism, which is way too early to tell, or whether or not it's just determined to be a disgruntled employee or somebody that has a particular beef with a particular student or faculty member, we in law enforcement have to move to the sound of the guns. And, and I'm confident in, in watching the scenes unfold on CNN right now and seeing the way that this is developed. I mean, this is what we train for. And from the FBI perspective, um, we, we absolutely want to put this out as far as the, the mantra that folks need to follow in these active shooter situations. The first thing that you need to do is run. And if you can't do that, it's, it's to hide in some type of secure place where you have cover and concealment. Uh, the next thing you need to do, if, the, if absent those two options, is to fight. That's, that's what you have to do. And lastly, is to tell. And I'm certain that as I watch these students coming out of the high school right now and the faculty members, they're being herded over into, into holding areas that are cordoned off, that are a safe distance away from, from where the shootings took place, and they're being debriefed. What type of intel do you have? How many shooters was it? Uh, you mentioned are there, are there booby traps or any potentials for improvised explosive devices? Those are the kind of things that investigators right now are, are going through with the survivors and the witnesses that are, are coming out of the school. I just want to point out these are live pictures of these young people running, running out of this school, running out um, after there have been reports of shots fired. If you are just joining us, let me, let me just welcome you. Uh, we are following just uh, an absolutely horrible scene out of Parkland, Florida. We've got some aerial pictures here from this high school. There's a, there's a SWAT vehicle right there, uh, police there all surrounding. This is Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School. This is in Broward County. Uh, again, a, a high school where it is an active shooter situation. We don't know a whole heck of a lot, but we know shots have been fired. We know that according to the Sheriff's Department, there are victims. And Diane Gallagher has been trying to get a bit more information for us on just the safety of students. If we know how many victims, how many shooters, Diane, tell me what you know. No, and Brooke, you know, in these situations, unfortunately, we have covered so many of them. There are a lot of uh, 
A lot of varying accounts that come out in these moments of panic right away. Sometimes they're students, sometimes they're parents, sometimes they're people uh, just trying to, to to start things in the moments afterward. I can tell you there's just under 3,000 students who attend the Stoneman Douglas High School there in Parkland. And uh, the sheriff's office has not given any sort of numbers. Uh, there are varying accounts from local media and people uh, on, on Twitter and online trying to talk about this. But all the sheriff's office is saying right now is that there are victims they know in this situation they aren't giving any sort of hard number right now uh, but it's a school of a little less than three a little fewer than 3,000 students we've seen a large number of people sort of streaming out of their students and teachers coming out of that building but of course as we were saying earlier police in Coral Springs are telling them if you're barricaded already in a room if you're barricaded already somewhere within that school stay there until somebody with law enforcement reaches you and uh, you were listening to those leaders Legal analysts before law enforcement analysts kind of explaining why they may tell them to do this. Uh, but even with the number of kids we're seeing walk out of this building right here, almost 3,000 students there at that school. Uh, so many still a, inside. Yeah, so many that are still inside that yeah. building. Uh, this, you know, typically around the end of a school day at a high school, there are activities that take place in the afternoons at high schools. It's, of course, a holiday. There are things that go on during these times. So uh, you have a lot of parents who show up. Uh, of course, you know, we've talked about this, Brooke. Unfortunately, what, January 23rd in Kentucky, uh, there was the shooting that injured 18 uh, kids, killed two of them there. And so this isn't something that uh, for, you know, unfortunately that we're not unfamiliar with. But let me jump in, Diane. For this. Uh, we mm -hmm. were just looking at pictures that looked to me like a, uh, it was one of those makeshift triage units uh, on, on, on the intersection there to treat those, you know, uh, more seriously injured, uh, per perhaps before taking them off to the hospital. And so there you had that. And we've seen a number of ambulances and a number of people being uh, rolled out uh, on stretchers. Let me just weave in a bit more information mm -hmm. as we're getting it from our Miami affiliate WSVN that they are reporting that Fire and Rescue was telling them that uh, at least 20 people have been injured so far. So 20. And we can tell you that FBI is on the scene. Um, Josh Campbell, former FBI, uh, joins me now. Josh, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, what, what the FBI, the, the presence on the scene, what they're able to do, how they're able to help. Yeah, let's just keep in mind that with the FBI responding, I mean, they are one agency and, and many that are going to work on this incident. In any type of active shooter situation, you're going to see that surge of law enforcement officers from various departments. You're going to see mutual aid officers coming in from neighboring departments to provide that kind of assistance. So it, it, this is something that you would typically see, especially in an emergent situation where you have, you know, potentially multiple casualties that you're going to have a large number of resources on scene. And so, you know, obviously these numbers look terrible that we've you know, been seeing from the early reports, um, but you can expect to see more law enforcement arrive. And you're also going to see a unified command because, you know, in these types of incidents, whether you remember back to uh, San Bernardino or, you know, a number of unfortunate of active shooter scenes that we've seen, um, you know, as our colleagues have mentioned before, the first focus is on stopping the threat. They'll get to the motive in the investigation later. So you're really going to see that unified command. And how how challenging is it? I mean, to, to the point that, you know, this is a pretty massive school, just less than 3,000 students. So you have a huge space if you're SWAT, you know, ATF, FBI, sheriff's deputies on scene trying to find the threat, right, locate the threat. How do you how do you do that when the when the place is just so huge? Well, a lot of it's going to depend on what the officers are seeing actually inside the school. So if they hear any type of, uh, you know, gunshots or any type of screens, any type of activity indicating that there's an emergency right in front of them, they're going to search to that location. Absent that, this is going to take some time. They're going to have to clear the, the, the school. As you mentioned, it's a, it's a large area. They're going to have to go room by room to ensure that they can safely account for all the students who are there, the teachers, the staff and faculty, and ensure that there are no threats inside. So I think we should all be prepared for this to last a while as they go through and clear the location. Mm -hmm. Walk me through, we've seen a number of kids either streaming out or just running. Uh, can you just walk me through the process of, of getting these kids out, out to safety, those who can leave the evacuations? Yeah, I mean, just remember as you're watching these pictures that you're really seeing um, two types of response, you know, collide in one. You have law enforcement, their job is to get everyone out safely and identify any threats. And as can be expected, you have people who have been involved in a very scary, scary situation. So, you know, law enforcement, they're going to treat each and every person as though they're a possible threat. So a lot of 
you know, the, the pictures that you see, you may see students coming out with their hands, you know, up and, you know, being instructed to do so. Again, law enforcement wants to ensure that everyone remains safe. But, you know, again, in any type Josh, of scary let me jump in. Let me jump in. We're just flashing a, a tweet up on the screen. This is from the Broward Sheriff Department saying that the shooter is still at large. Shooter still at large. How do you yeah, handle that? that? Yeah, that's going to complicate the situation even further. You know, a lot of these incidents we've seen either the, sh the shooter taken down or, you know, the shooter has fled and then is, is ultimately interdicted. But with the shooter still at large, again, law enforcement is going to treat this as an active scene and it, it's going to be very complicated. They're going to be working their way through. And, you know, one, one last thing that we're going to look for here in this unified command is ensuring that law enforcement officers are communicating with each other, which we can assure that they do. They train for these types of situations. And so, again, they're, they're trying to bring control to chaos, but it's very difficult, especially in an active scene. Josh, thank you. Stay with me. Let me bring another voice in. Juliet Kayam, former Homeland Security. Juliet, we have walked through some of these before, and it never, uh, you know, each and every time it gives us all just that, that pit in our stomach, knowing what, what could be happening within the walls of the school. 3,000 or so people, and you heard it from the Broward County Sheriff's Department saying that the shooter uh, is, is still out there, has not been located.